These are some of the most difficult words for me to give. I Sometimes I wish I had, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Compromising spirit in that I would give all of the words that God placed on my heart that are just preaching cream, always preaching love, peace, roses. But that's an un imbalanced God. You know, God is an emotional creature or creator, I should say. No one ever disrespect him. He's an emotional creator that he has different feelings about different things. Uh, we are created in his image. And as humans, we have different emotions concerning or towards different things that occurs in our life. We become emotional to the point where we may cry. We may get upset and become angry about a matter. Uh, we rejoice at times. And so we reflect the motions of God in that regard. And I'm no different. Um, one of the unique qualities I uh, have with my relationship with the Father is that there are times when he puts something in my spirit to address and my emotions will display what he's feeling. So there are times you may see me on my platform where I'm discussing something and I become very passionate um, to my voice is elevated. And you can hear the tension in my voice because I'm reflecting the emotion of God concerning that matter. There's a few times you've seen me on here on this platform discussing the matter and um, I become very teary uh, because that's God's emotion regarding the matter. So my purpose for being on here this morning it's because my heart is heavy. Um, I just realized that I didn't even open up the way I normally open up these videos, which is, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm just not feeling that this morning. Um, I saw something on television this morning when I was catching myself up on the news that was very disturbing, which I've already posted maybe two or three comments about it. Uh, because I see myself and I've had even my senior pastor refer to me as such. Well, me and my minister partner as such and as watchmen on the wall. So when something gets in my spirit, I have to share it publicly. Because just like it says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 23, I don't want blood on my hands. I don't want to stand before my creator and have blood on my hands because I didn't make the clearing, clearing can call under circumstances that we are potentially facing today as a nation. As y'all already know, I posted, uh, th like I said, about three posts on my Facebook page this morning. I post on Facebook probably more than any other page, uh, social media pages that we have. And I posted about this crazy idea, which I know they're trying to implement, with uh, Newsom, the governor of California, and Camilla Harris, our so-called current vice president, running for their 2024 presidential election. Now, now, they present it as if that's not going to happen. Now, in fact, in an interview, Newsom said, um, and if I can uh, find that interview, if YouTube hasn't blocked it from the internet, or I should say Google hasn't blocked it from the internet, uh, I'll show it on the screen, where uh, Newsom said that he wasn't going to run for the 24, 2024 election uh, because Bonnie will run and, um, but if he, then he turns around and says, but if he did run, 
Camilla Harrison would be a good running partner. Now, you know that man is lying through his teeth. I don't care what you say. They're testing us. They're testing to see how the Republic will respond to it. Now, the, the reason I'm mainly on here because I want to share with y'all a vision that I had when Felicia and I went into her prayer room to pray about this matter. Um, but before I get into the vision, which, by the way, when I describe this vision, I am not going to be able to depict this vision as grotesque and demonic as I saw it. Um, there's no video, there's no pictures, there are no words can describe what I saw. If the church don't come together and get this election right, the 2024 election right. But I want <clears throat> to start off by reading a scripture that came up during our prayer time. Felicia ended up uh, getting up from her knees when she was leading us in prayer and reading Isaiah chapter 43, which you will see the scripture pop up here in a minute. Isaiah chapter 43, she started at verse 10 and she read down to verse 14 and it read this way and I'm gonna try not to get emotional because right now I feel the heaviness the concern on God's heart and let me say this next thing and for some of you all when I say this this can be controversial you may even disagree with this next statement and it's okay we can agree to disagree but I've heard of quite a few leaders who say from their platform that it does not matter who is in office. And I understand the point that they're they're making. And it's true. It really doesn't matter who is in office. God is going to have his way one way or the other. But I disagree with that statement because it really does matter. It matters not from a standpoint that God is not going to be able to do what he chooses to do. But it matters from the standpoint of the effects when the wrong person is in office. We as Christians were giving uh, dominion over the earth. That's what it says in Psalms. That God has given the earth to the sons of men. In the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, he set it up, Adam and Eve, to have dominion over everything that's on the earth. So when anything comes into power, like Satan came into power in the Garden of Eden, it is because the church, the church has failed to do the things that needs to be done to push back the presence of a demonic agenda. When sin has risen to the level it is, or it has risen, it falls on the shoulders of the church. We are failing this world and the different systems in this world because we were given dominion over the earth. Let's get in this word. It says at Isaiah 43, verse 10 through 14, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servants who I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed and there will be none after me. I, even I, am the Lord 
and there is no Savior besides me. Let me read that one again. And there is no Savior. And I added that S, that plural in there, beside me. It is I who have declared and saved and proclaimed. And there was no strange God among you. So you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and I am God. Even from eternity, I am he, and there is none who, who can deliver out of my hand. I act, and who can reverse? Let me read that one again. When God acts, who can reverse it? When he decides and he declares, who can reverse it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I have sent to Babylon and will bring them all down as fugitives. Even the Chaldeans, excuse me, even the Chaldeans into the ships in which they rejoice. Now, as Felicia was reading that those verses in Isaiah 43, what was coming in my spirit as I laid there on the floor of my face was Hosea chapter 4. And this is one of those verses I used to, in my early part of my ministry, quote it quite often as well. I had my favorites that I quote for one reason or another. And I remember there was a season where I was referring to Hosea chapter 4 a lot prior to our um, nation getting to the point where we are today. So I'm going to read Hosea chapter 4 verses 1 through 6. And it talks about God's controversy with Israel, his chosen nation. Listen to the word of of the Lord, O sons of Israel. For the Lord has a case against you, the inhabitants of the land, because there is no faithfulness or kindness or knowledge of God in the land. Mm. There is swearing, deception, murder, stealing, and adultery. They employ violence so that bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore, the land mourns. <laughs> Let me read that one again. Therefore, the land mourns. Now, you got to remember, this is the Lord speaking. He said at the very beginning of this, these verses, listen to the word of the Lord. Therefore, the land mourns and everyone who lives in it leverages along with the beasts of the field and the birds of the sky and also the fish of the sea disappear. Yet let no one find fault and let none offer reproof. For you people are like those who contend with the priests. So you will stumble by day and the prophets also will stumble with you by night. And I will destroy your mother, my people, his people. Today, his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why? Because you have rejected knowledge. He's talking about true knowledge, the ways of God. I also will reject you from being my priests. Since you have forgotten, <laughs> you have forgotten the law of your God. My vision. And again, I am not going to be able to pick the grotesque. I'm going to make up a word probably. Grotesqueness of what I saw in this vision. I can remember the vision was so despicable 
as I was laying there on the floor in my face that I had to cover my face with my hands trying to prevent to see what the Lord was showing me. So this is what I saw. Felicia was praying. She was leading us in prayer. And whenever I'm in a prayer group among a group of spiritual individuals, it can be just one, but even when it's more than one individuals praying together, one of the things that always happens with me when I get quiet and still in such a powerful atmosphere is I'm open up to visions. Sometimes they're beautiful and good. Like I've had visions in the right atmosphere in church where I see an army of women, and I've shared this vision before, dancing before God's throne in unity and uh, um, prophetic, not prophetic, I'm sorry, prophetess were leading a group of women an army of women that was so many you can could not see how far it was. And I got the location wrong. I didn't have that vision in the church. I actually had that vision in the setting where Felicia and I were praying together. But the women, the group of women were so wide and broad, broad, um, broad spread out. I couldn't see where the, this group of army women ended. I've had visions in God house, in church during worship service, where I saw this one individual who is a worship leader dancing before God's throne. And it was so beautiful. I've seen myself in visions, dancing in military attire. But this vision was frightening. I do have some very horrific visions and settings like that, but they're far in between. But this is what I saw. And again, I am not going to be able to really depict the horrific things I saw in this vision. I saw Governor Newsom sitting on a golden throne. And what was interested, interesting about the way he was sitting, he was sitting back, he was slouched over in, the, in his throne like this. In his right hand, he had a scepter, long scepter. And the scepter, he was kind of holding, um, kind of leaning off to the side like this. He was, wasn't holding it straight up. And he had a crown on his head. And the crown was on his head tilted slightly to the side. And his legs were spread open very wide. And when I saw him sitting on this throne, it kind of reminded me, um, no offense to hip hop rappers, because I am a rap lover, but, um, uh, well, not the type of rap I used to listen to back in the day. I um, now feel to uh, go toward, lean towards more of Christian rap than anything. But anyway, uh, it reminded me of hip hop rappers you will see uh, in music videos where they're sitting there slouching and they got these chains on and things of that nature. And what I was told in the vision that the way uh, Newsom was sitting on this gold, gold throne, golden throne, was showing you you mean the don't care attitude he had about the royal position he was in, the divine position he was in. And his attitude was so nonchalant that there were individuals coming and whispering things that he was enacting in his right ear. And after I saw these spirits whispering things in his right ear, all of a sudden, I started getting this weird, unusual feeling in my behind. Now, mind you, I'm laying scratch out on the floor on my face. 
And I said to myself, why am I feeling the sensation? And I don't know if sensation is the best word to put it, but I'm, that's, the way, that's the way I can describe it. Sensation in my behind. And then the vision continued. And the reason why I was feeling the sensation, God forgive me for saying this way, in the crack of my butt, because all of a sudden in the vision, sewage started coming out and spreading everywhere on the land. The stench of it was horrible. And the looks of it was just make you want to vomit. And I'm like, what is this? What is this? And then I was instructed. The reason why I was feeling the sensation at the crack of my behind. Because if what is trying to take place like a Newsom and a Camilla Harris being elected and placed in office, you're going to see demonic things come out from the cracks of the earth to the surface. And it's going to cause a stink in culture that's going to be unbelievable. In fact, this is the way it was described to me. If this happens, you're going to first have what society thinks is peace and security. Does not the scripture talks about that? There will be a season of peace and security. Now, keep in mind, uh, prophet, and I ain't going to try to say his last name because I probably mess it up, Tommy. I want to say he gave a prophetic word back in 2020 or 2021. And I don't remember the title of his prophetic word, so I'm calling it the Now Year Prophecy. And in that video, from that point when he gave that word, he said, we had nine years to build Christians. Whatever it is that God has given you to do, you have nine years to build it before all hell breaks loose. Before all hell breaks loose. I'll put the link to that YouTube page. I need to go back and listen to that word to myself because I don't remember everything he said. So I'm just flowing right now with the spirit. And that's what came up in my spirit. And that was that's what came up in the prayer room um, during this part of the uh, prayer affiliation I had about this possibility of a Newsom and uh, Camilla Harris <laughs> presidential run in 2024. And so at any rate, that prophetic word came in my spirit. And, and the vision is continuing. All I'm seeing is this sewage constantly spreading all over the place and it's getting bigger and bigger, higher and higher, almost like a flood, a flood that you would see, the kind of floods you would see that occurs in uh, different nations and cities nowadays. It, it was just horrific and sickening to the stomach. And then it was brought back to my mind, a prophetic word I gave, I believe it was 2019, and I'll put... Um, a link to uh, several of the posts I gave, and it was about Donald Trump. But in that particular prophetic word, what I said a lot that God had to say at that time. But the part of the prophetic word that came to in my spirit was when I was warning people that, um, and this is me paraphrasing, if we didn't get the 2020 election right, it, it well, let me let me correct that. It it was a twofold warning. The warning was uh, concerning the twenty twenty election, and it also was a warning to Donald Trump. And basically, in the prophetic word, I was saying that if we didn't get the twenty twenty 
presidential election right. And the fact that Donald Trump was currently in the office as president, his presidency was a sign of not just being a wall for this nation and the church of preventing some demonic things coming into our society because he was making a lot of decisions that was in harmony with God's will, his law, his word in the Bible. He was overturning a lot of demonic laws that was put into place from Obama and other former presidents. Um, he was establishing a lot of things that benefit all the people. The problem was with Donald Trump, especially with from a Christian standpoint, was you can't get beyond the things this man was saying sometimes do from a personal standpoint. But from a legislation standpoint, the man was solid. He was on point. So, but the warning in that prophetic word was because of uh, Donald Trump sometimes would be a stumbling block to himself in the way he would do and say things. Um, that God was also showing us, particularly the body of Christ, you think this is bad as far as character is concerned. We don't get this right. Something worse is coming. And something worse did come. Biden and Camilla Harris. We see what we got, what we get. I probably missed that street slang um, up as well. We did. If you have a moral conscience and a moral standing of what God stands for, we allow the mess to get in the office. And I also said in that same prophetic word with Donald Trump that what will follow the mess we have put in the office is even something worse. Newsom and Camilla Harris fit that bill of what worse would be than what we currently have. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but that's the best reaction I can give outside of getting... Because mm. I know the words I speak sometimes can be very stinging. But even when I speak words that are stinging, this is the tone I normally speak. Those who are in my circle knows it takes a lot to get me mad, mad. I'm not, I'm not a yeller. It's not in my bones. The first time my mother ever saw me really, really got upset to where it physically displayed on the outside. I was 23 years old. And I was so fed up, fed up with my baby sister at that time and how she was disrespecting my mom. And I just blew up. And I went in at my sister. And if my mother didn't step in between her and I, I would have whipped my sister behind. But that's the side of me that people very rarely see, especially in my inner circle. And when I do, Felicia may have seen me blown up twice, if that. And, and usually, you know, usually, and every time, those few times I did, she was shocked because it's not my nature. So when I post these strong words on Facebook, don't read too much into it of how I'm re physically responding. Because I have a calm, very reserved personality. But when I do for the most part, do get that way. It's because God is pouring into me what he is feeling in the moment. It's like Jeremiah said, when he said, I refuse, I refuse to speak anything else you tell me to do or say. He was getting frustrated with the kind of things God was telling me him to say to the people. But then he turns around and the next moment says that he can't keep it inside. 
So when I am showing emotions like that, it's because I can't keep it inside what God is feeling. I just can't. That vision was horrifying, but the, getting back to the part with the sensation with the crack in the butt, <laughs> I was feeling, Lord Jesus. The reason why an angel instructed me, the reason why the angel of the Lord instructed me why I was feeling that sensation, and the word sensation is not the best way to describe it, but I don't know how other way to describe it was because if someone like Newsom and Camilla Harris ends up in the office together with Nancy Pelosi as the Speaker of the House, everything demonic that you can think of that's under the surface of the earth would come out through every crack. And end up on the surface of the earth. Causing havoc. In mankind's life. And the next thing I heard. And the last thing I heard. In that vision. I saw this angel. It's almost like he was. Flying about. Mid heaven. But it wasn't necessary. Him physically flying. It was his voice. What he was announcing. Was flying out. And this is what I heard, guys. You might as well go out and go to work in the fields. And they, meaning like the 1%, will end up in the White House. The difference about what this angel was declaring about going out in the fields was not just black people based on our history, where we were working out there in the fields as slaves and the white class were in white houses, plantations home. Is everybody's in the field. Don't matter whether you're white, black, brown, purple, blue, green, don't matter your color. Everybody would be in the field except for that 1% who's ruling the world. Again, my words is not giving justice to what I saw in that vision. Now, even though I saw this horrific thing, this vision, there was hope in that vision the way it was presented, which goes back to Hosea chapter four. If my people who are called by my name will pray, I will hear and I will heal your name. I'm gonna see you and I will heal your land. If my people who are called by my name will pray. I will hear. He will hear. God will hear. And he will heal our land. This demonic thing that is trying to be released on the earth at a level that we have never seen before, God can delay it. There will come a season of time for it. And there ain't going to be no way to get around it. But God knows this is not the season or time that he wants such things to occur. If my people, the church, God's people, would come together. Come together in local churches. This is not the time for local churches not to be assembling and praying. If local churches are not similar in praying, there's a problem somewhere within leadership because that should be a priority in all of God's houses. His word 
in prayer. I'm sorry to say you have to question leadership if prayers meeting is not a prominent thing in their houses. So there's a disconnect somewhere. If my people, Jesus, if my people who are called by name, called by my name, will pray he will hear and heal the land I'm going to end it right there folks don't take this lightly don't sit on this and I know some of y'all don't think nothing is wrong with the things that Biden is doing in office. His administration. Some of y'all didn't think there was anything wrong with the things that Obama did in office. And that's sad. It really is. Because nothing those two men did while they were office was in harmony with God's word. As men who sat on the throne, they were not operating in a way that God expect men to domain, to excuse me, to rule, have dominion over the earth. Trump had his issues, but he came close. I had a problem with uh, when some prophets would say uh, during elections when Trump was running that you had to choose between the two evils. I didn't have the maturity at the time to really understood what that meant. Uh, but now I do. In the 2024 uh, election, we have to choose the best of the two evils. Biden, Camilla Harris, men like uh, Newsom is definitely not the best option. Not for the church of God, here on the earth, not for society, not for nations, not for countries. They will, yeah, if someone like that got into office, Newsom and Harrison, in the beginning, it would seem like all our problems was resolved. It would be like, uh, sweet honey, peace and security, and then suddenly, we're going to find ourselves in the fields. In the 1% in the White House. Working for nothing. Owning nothing. And we're going to look back at this day. And wonder. Why we didn't listen. But. Like the scripture Felicia has shared last week. There are going to be some. As it says in the book of Revelation. They're still going to be blind and they're not going to repent. Because we're just that close to the end. But at the end of the story, at least this story, there's always hope. Because we know the church will be raptured. And after that seven year period, this earth will be cleansed and reestablished to the way that God intended when he first created mankind in the Garden of Eden. But the troublesome part of that is what this earth will go through to get back to what God intended. 
that would be hell on earth. You talking about those California uh, fires that we see just a few years back and what it looked like in the films and videos and pictures people were sharing. It would be worse than that. If my people would get their act together and pray, take dominion over the earth, repent and pray, God will hear and he will push the madness back and execute real justice against those who are deserving.